I got to ask, though, what was like the most memorable either stunt or incident or anything else that took place on like uh, when you were working with Stallone? Hey, guys, welcome to part one of my interview with Jeff Langton, martial artist, actor, stuntman, blues musician, boxing coach. The guy wears a lot of hats. So really fun interview. In this one, we're going to talk about his uh, history, starting off in the martial arts, his gang life early on, you know, when he wasn't quite on the right path. And also stunt doubling for Sylvester Stallone. He'll share some fun stories with that. So if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel. Hit the like button, subscribe, share this video. But let's start with the beginning. Let's get the story. So a lot of people have seen you in a lot of different films. You got ties to the boxing world, etc. How did it all start? How did you even break into movies? Into the movie business or how I started in martial arts? Well, we could even go further back if you want. <laughs> well, let, let's, well, let's start from the beginning because, you know, and I, I'll be brief on it. Um, I got in a, I was in a gang. Um, I was a, kind of a gang leader, a part of a gang. And I got in a street fight down in a creek and this uh, Latino kid, he gave me a tune up. And I said to myself, I said, I'm never going to have, have this happen to me again. And my father, who was a boxer in the Marine Corps, you know, his idea of giving me uh, boxing gloves on uh, Christmas and taking me out in the backyard on Christmas and my birthday and uh, showing me what the art of pugilism is. So anyway, getting back to the story. Um, so I saw Cato uh, on the Green Hornet, uh, basically uh, Bruce Lee, and I wanted to learn how to fight like the Chinese guy. So, wow, that guy can really fight, man. If I could fight like him, I'll, you know, I'll be into it. Sure. So we lived in uh, San Jose at that time. And I went down to Watanabe's Dry Goods, and it was a Japanese store, and they had karate geese. And I said, hey, I want to learn that kung fu stuff. Oh, there's this guy up the street. You know, he teaches uh, karate. Go up and see him. So I took my silver 10-speed, and I rode up the street to 4th Street. So I was about 12, 11 years old, and I started in Shotokan Karate uh, with a guy by the name of Chuck, Kyoshi Chuck Okamira, rest in peace, and a guy named Leonard Lafferty. Leonard Lafferty was in the gym, and he said, hey, brah, go over there and uh, clean the floor. So as a little kid, like 11 or 12, started cleaning the floor. He said, you come back on Monday and bring your mom, and we'll talk about it. So I got my mom. And it was $12.50 a month mm -hmm. to uh, start karate lessons. And I, I went up to Greenbelt. Then I, uh, I was about 16, 17. And then I went to Ernie Reyes, who was trained under a guy named uh, Dan Choi. So I started there and I got my black belt with, uh, with Ernie Reyes. And he went on to be West Coast uh, Taekwondo. It's in, it's in my uh, history, so I won't bore because I know you have questions. Um, but you know, I, I knew Ernie Jr. I, I was a collegiate gymnast and a high school gymnast. I took Ernie Reyes Jr. to learn how to do gymnastics with me under under a guy from Japan. He was the first Japanese gymnast to ever do a triple twister on the floor. And his name was Wachiro Miki. So Miki San was my gymnastics coach. And then I went on and uh I don't want to forget Mr. Ron Lu, Sifu Ron Lu, uh Fuja Pai. When I was a little kid, I looked through his window and he invited me and he trained me for free. Even though I was taking Shotokan, I wanted to train with him. So anyway, you know, here, here, here it is. You know, I'm 65 years old. I've had a, uh, a, a bicuspid valve on my heart. I've been living seven years with a, with a bad heart, taking medication. That's why I got bloated because of uh, the medication. And I'll be having the biggest challenge of my life. But anything you want to ask me, David, go ahead, because I because I could just keep on talking. I want to give you guys an update. So I talked to Jeff prior to him going into surgery. Open heart surgery so was kind of a big deal. I am happy to report that he is doing very well. He is recovering, and he's kind of going to have a second chance on life, which is great. Let's go back to uh, you were in a gang. Like, why were you in a gang? Why did you decide to join a gang? 
Oh, uh, because they, uh, because I was, uh, I came from a basically, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of money at that time. And, and I got, I got fed good on Monday because they would, you know, they robbed the drunks out in, uh, you know, at the bars and stuff. And I'm not going to mention their names, but yeah, sure. one of them's still alive. The other brother, he's passed away. And, and I just, uh, they were, they were, you know, that's how I got into boxing too. You know, I mean, because of them. So why was I in that? Uh, be- I don't even know why. I mean, it was uh, just part of my life, you know, and uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, we had a lot of fun riding around in the cars and going to the clubs and dancing and fighting. And, you know, I saw a lot of bad things in my life. You know, uh, these guys were playing pool. This will be in my book. They were playing pool. And I saw a guy stab a guy like like inches from me. I never seen anybody get stabbed before he stabbed me. The guy hit the guy hit the eight ball, went in the pocket, and the guy the money was on the table. He grabbed the money, and the guy took out like a steak knife, like a big steak knife, and stabbed the guy right next to me. And the place just burst into fighting. Jeez, so it was let, a little let violent me ask you back this, then. Jeff. Um, did, when you got into martial arts, though, did you quit the gang, or were you a, a martial arts gang guy? Um, I was still, I was still, um, I was still affiliated with them, of course. They were my okay. brothers. Up until when, though? Really you eventually got out of that life, though, right? And, pardon me? You eventually got out of that life. Like, when When did you quit the gang? Well, that's that's when I, um, they, uh, I don't want to talk about that part of my life, but they kind of took me to a youth camp. And uh, and then I. that's when I found the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Oh, nice. Okay, so basically, religion and Christ got you out of the gang. Yes, it did. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. And I'm still, I mean, that's that's uh, the main interest of my life is, you know, my relationship with my Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, I, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, I mean, I'm not perfect. That's obvious. But, but I mean, he's really, he's really been a big impact in my life and staying out of trouble and you know, and having some kind of ethics and morals in myself. I, my main, my main purpose in life is to help other people now. Nice. Um, you know, I, I, I love people. I love to talk. I love to, you know, make people happy. I love people to smile. I love people to, to be basically, you know, I want to help people. That's, that's my main mission. I, I own a boxing gym in Burbank, Langton's Boxing and Martial Arts for 14 years. And they call me the Pope of Oak Street. I'm go. the Pope of Oak. That's no joke. Put on this earth to give you some hope. I'm Jeff Langton. I'll hit you with the ton. And uh-oh, you might not have no fun. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the, uh, you were with Ernie Reyes, the demo team. You were doing gymnastics like in college. Now, how did you end up in Hollywood, though? Well, I think that you guys probably understand I have a, a little bit of a New York accent. My father was uh, from Brooklyn, New York, Flatbush. My mother's from Alabama. And I have my aunt, Aunt Pat. She lives in uh, in Brooklyn. And uh, at that time when I was a troublemaker, I would, I would say, um, they put me on a bus, a 16-year-old kid on a bus, and they sent me. <laughs> they wouldn't do that today. That'd be child abuse. But sure. they sent me on a bus and, Send me back to my aunts, and I, I lived in in Brooklyn, and uh, I, um, you know, I I love going back there because on Fourth of July, I mean, you know, back in that time in Brooklyn, they would light up the streets with the fireworks, and I love fireworks, and uh, you know that that place was a breeding ground for criminals, as everybody knows, mm. and um, I met this one man, his name was Lolly. Uh, Lolly was uh, um, an Italian man. Um, he was a boxer. He used to box with Marky Marciano. And I had some boxing skills, and he wanted to take me under his wing to be a fighter for him. Okay. And uh, so he taught me how to count the punches. Like when uh, he says that boxers have habits. And when boxers, uh, like they do a jab, you know the right hand's going to come. So you, you, know, you slip, you, know, you counter punch. He says, count the punches, and that's how you're going to know your fighter because because boxers have habits. And I still use that method today of, you know, teaching my fighters, like, hey, count the punches. Watch what the guy's doing. 
Mm-hmm. You know, if he does a couple of jabs, that right hand's going to come. You know, you can sidestep, slip, and counter punch. You understand? Because the most important punch in boxing is the jab. Why? Because it sets up all the punches. Mm-hmm. And it'll put you back into an unbalanced position. Whenever you throw a right hand, either you're orthodox or, or either you're orthodox or southpaw, after you throw your left hand or you throw your right hand, you're going to be a little bit off balance. I don't care what any boxing trainer says. You're going to shift your weight. You understand? Mm-hmm. You're going to shift your weight from different sides in your, in your movement. And that's how, by counting the punches, is a lost art of boxing like fainting. Mm. We'll talk more about the boxing a little bit later because you were involved in the movie film world prior to that. So how'd you get involved? Was it through like Ernie Reyes? Cause I know they, they did some film. Okay, work now or... you're talking about them, how I got, well, so after I was in Brooklyn, New York, you know, my uncle hit, we live in a little flat in uh, Independence Avenue. Um, he said, Hey, why don't you go to Hollywood and try to be a stunt man? Okay. That's random. <laughs> so I got him. I got on a, I guess got him back on the bus again, went home, Got, got some kind of car and I drove to Hollywood. I met a guy by the name of Eric Lee. Mm-hmm. I don't know if every, everybody should know Eric Lee. He was the king of Kata. He's like one of my closest friends. And he said, uh, I said, hey, I was with a guy by the name of Harry Mock. We drove down together the first time. Okay. I, I got I to gotta remember my history. We drove down the first time. And then um, I told him, I said, hey, um, can you help me get a job? And it was a guy named Julio Hernandez at uh, the Palace Nightclub on Vine. And I started working there as a doorman. I worked there for two and a half years. Okay. Okay. Across the street from Capitol Records, I worked there. And for the first six months, I was living in my car. And um, this guy by the name of Harold Diamond uh, came up to me and says, hey, they have um, auditions out of Universal Studios to play uh, in the live." Conan the Barbarian show. So I, I went out there and I said, well, Harold, how much you pay? Oh, the 36 bucks. I said, ah, I don't want to do that. You know, he goes, $36 a show, but you do six shows a day. So I went out there and there's probably about over 200 guys that tried out, maybe 160, 200 guys. And um, I went and I did my, my swords because I knew a little bit of Kung Fu swords, double swords. And uh, basically the, the guy that was he hired me, called me back and hired me. Oh, you were, and, I didn't know you were part of that show. Yeah, I was part of that show. Matter of fact, I got by a guy named Mark DeCoscos. Yeah, you know he Mark was part DeCoscos? of that show too. Yeah, he was part of that show too. I met Mark and his mom, Malia. Um, and a Karen Shepard was on that show. Uh, Brian Thompson was on that show. So I worked up wow. there for about two years. And, and, and that's when um, they, um, they said, hey, uh, you know, you want to try out for this movie called Lethal Games. You know, and I said, okay. So I went down there and I met Frank Stallone. Okay, oh, Frank okay. Stallone. Sure. And prior to that, I went down to try out for Rocky too, mm-hmm. And that's when I first time I met Sly. So I already had an induction with his brother. I said, hey, I met your brother in Rocky too. I was boxing at Muhammad Ali's gym at that time. I was a professional boxing sparring partner. I never turned professional as a uh, as a boxer, but I, um, you know, I, I used to go in and spar because I, 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 you know, I, I came from a professional boxing gym. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they pay me like 50 bucks, you know, per round or, you know, I box with world champions. So uh, getting back to the movie thing. Um, so they hired me and I worked up there for two and a half years. And like I said, I met Frank Sloan and the first movie I ever starred in was with Frank Stallone. I had no acting training. I didn't know anything about acting. Mm-hmm. And I, I played the crazy guy. And I said, well, this ain't going to be hard to do, right? Sure. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so basically, I did that. And then I worked with his brother. And I did like six movies with his brother. And I became friends. with still still friends with uh, Sly to this day. We text back and forth. And uh at the tribute for Harry Mock, I played a, a nice message from Sly. Harry is very good friends with Sly, too. And, yeah, that's uh, cool. Let me ask you this, Jeff. So you were literally like Stallone's um, 
a stunt double, right? Like you doubled yes. Stallone in a lot of those movies. Yeah, no, but you know, the thing is when people say that you Sly stunt double, you know, he doesn't like that. I mean, and I understand that, but, but, you know, Sly, you know, I mean, you got to understand something. They got millions and millions of dollars in a movie. They're, they're not going to have him, you know, skip across the floor and trip and break his leg. Mm -hmm. They have completion bonds. So when people say that there's stunt double, the thing is you're there just to do something where he's not going to get injured. Do you understand? Yeah. And um, yes, yes, I work for him and uh, I love the guy and the guy's, the guy's been a mentor to me. I, I mean, I did, I did Rocky five. I trained Tommy Morrison for Rocky five. I did Tango and Cash with him. I did uh, Cobra with him. I did a lot of movies. He's, he's a he's a great guy. You know, he's a wonderful man. His brother, you know, they're like family to me. You know, you know. I mean, like, you know, just like your 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 friend there, Jean Claude. Jean Claude's like my brother. You know, and I love Jean Claude. And yeah, you know, that, that's was, awesome. We'll, and we'll have to talk more about Jean Claude soon. I gotta ask though, what was like the most memorable? either stunt or incident or anything else that took place on like uh when you were working with stallone uh i was in thailand and uh the most rememberable rememberable thing and it still hurts just when uh, harold kicked my leg and uh and i didn't really understand that uh you know that i had to have the correct padding but you know uh that was that was the first time that i was introduced that hey when you're a stunt man you know, they, they're going to make it look real and, you know, you're going to get injured. I don't care. I mean, you know. Uh, Kick your leg like on what movie? That was Rambo 3. Oh, I and was thinking I that because of Thailand. Oh, so the you mean the stick fighting? Like you? Yeah, yeah. I was doing that. I, was, I took scene? the kick to the leg. Oh, that was you? And then I did, and I did some kicks that Sly, you know, Sly didn't do. But, but you know, he did He did it most of everything. I just did the, the stuff that were, you know, that they wanted to look and i mean that fight scene is amazing i love that fight and, scene and then um uh, you know like stuntman i'm not a stuntman so i don't care anymore but but i broke my wrist on tango and cash i was uh they slide back fist me you can see it and then i went back and then i landed on my wrist and i kind of busted my wrist so okay. i mean you, you get when you do when you're stuntman you're gonna get injured man yeah, i mean sure. that's what they Part pay you territory for. yeah you know, just like Steven Seagal. I mean, Steven says, hey, you know, that's what I'm paying for. You know, he's going to, you know, he's going to hit you. But like I told Steven, I said, hey, Steven, after you hit him the first time, what's the next take? You know, you send him off to the hospital. <laughs> but um, like I doubled Alex Baldwin on um, on uh, Minnie's first time, and I was the one that went through the window. Mm -hmm. And um, I dislocated my, my bicep, but still I got like a disfigurement. You know, they paid me for money for that, but, but, you know, stunt stunts is uh, like Jean-Claude told me, you know, Hey, you got the good look, you know, you need to be in the movies. You need to be an actor, you know, and he was right. But uh, we're, we're talking more about uh, Sly right now. Um, what a wonderful man. And mm -hmm. like, like, look at his career. I mean, he's, he's still the king. Man. Still at the top of his game. And I worked with him when he was, at clerical, I mean, he was the main guy, and yeah. here I am, a 28 year old guy, double, you know, working, stand in, friend, you know, going all over the place with him. I mean, my, it was a beautiful time in my life, you know. No doubt, no doubt, because I really thought and, you're, I guess, outside of stunts, the the acting really started with Lionheart, though, because you had, uh, you know, we everybody could see it was you, and you had. <laughs> Very memorable dialogue, right? <laughs> I don't know if I want to fight you. Well, fuck you. Ooh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, it'll be on my gravestone. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not too soon. No, but, you'll uh, be yeah, fine, man. Lionheart, um... how'd, you, how'd you get involved in Lionheart? We got to talk about that.